Fields. Welcome back to AgriTalk from the Farm Progress Show site in Decatur, Illinois. Our Farm Progress Show preview series brought to you by Syngenta. Joining us now is Bob Lawless, Syngenta Agronomic Service Representative. And Bob, thank you for joining us. And what a challenging spring it has been as we take a look uh, throughout the state of Illinois and uh, certainly right here around the, the Farm Pro Progress Show site, Central Illinois and Decatur. Uh, has been challenging, but uh, uh, where th crops are not standing in water, they really look pretty good. Yeah, we really recovered a lot. I mean, this year with cold and wet early, that pretty much set the stage for a lot of agronomic issues, you know, seedling diseases, just getting the crop off and going, and, and obviously the wet weather. Uh, some of these wet spots, they're not going to come back at this point, but the corn's got good nodal root development. We've got through those compacted sidewalls that we messed up at planting. So that probably, you know, having some moist soils has probably helped us from that standpoint. That's a good point because it was a challenge for some to get those crops planted. It was so wet, but an advantage of it staying wet is that those roots could break through and, uh, you know, there was enough moisture, enough softness in that soil that they didn't hit that, uh, you know, that real hard soil that could have caused a lot of problems. Yeah, so I mean, once we got through that, now I need a little drier so the roots will go down now uh, because obviously it'll dry off sometime this summer. So that, that'll be the next issue. But, you know, corn right now, we're in pretty good stage. Beans, you know, we need to get a little growth on them. Still got a lot of potential for with, you know, warmer, wet weathers, things like Phytophthora to come in there. But uh, so far, corn's, corn's looking as good as you could ask right now anyway. What about corn disease? You tell me you have seen some problem areas. Yeah, I mean, early on in the season, Pythium was probably as bad as I've ever seen it this year. Pythium likes cold, wet weather uh, with seedling corn, you know, before you've really got nodal root development. Uh, so I actually saw fields where it took out some pretty significant stand where it normally just dings it a little bit. It, it actually lost stand in some fields. So that, that was pretty big this year in corn early on. Uh, we're past that stage, you know, at this point now. What about insects? Uh, insects, probably the big one this year, black cutworm, uh, especially in some areas, was pretty significant. Uh, that's where uh, we had some fields where we had Viptera in the refuge, 50% uh, stand loss in the refuge where the Viptera looked fantastic. Unfortunately, it was on the end of the planter, so it was strips of, of dead corn every now and then through the field, but no, it made, made that look very, very well. Uh, from that standpoint. That was probably the big one so far. Uh, little concerns with corn earworm coming up. Uh, with late planting corn earworm, we get those in flights from the south. They tend to favor late planted corn going into that because we're about second generation for we're in the years. So a little concern on corn earworm, I guess, coming up next. You cover a good chunk of Illinois right now. You're covering maybe a little more than usual filling in of covering for some of uh, your peers, but uh, um, Certainly we see a wide range of conditions uh, throughout the state of Illinois, depending mostly on how much moisture that certain areas got. Yeah, and you know, this year was strange. Uh, Northern Illinois planted first and worked south to Southern Illinois, which is totally opposite of what it should be. So yeah, every it's, it's feast or famine. Uh, just even looking at the news where there's droughts in part of the country and floods in others, and it's everywhere in between. Where are we with weed control? Weed control probably started out a little tough this year. Uh, with late planting, a lot of guys skipped the burn down or didn't get it on or didn't get some residual down. Uh, a lot of these fields, especially the no-till fields, there was a lot of half-dead weeds out there, uh, which has got me a little concerned because those are pretty good size now. Guys are going in now and trying to knock down some trophy weeds, you might say. Uh, so that's going to be an issue, I think, getting some of these weeds knocked down in some of these fields. So check out those Syngenta products that can help with it. Yes, I mean, you know, and, and using multiple modes of action. Glyphosate resistance is something we've been preaching a long time, and that, that may rear a few more resistance problems when you let weeds get out of hand like we did this year. It just wasn't your normal plan this year, and anytime you deviate off that and don't get some residual down, there's going to be issues. So if we get some uh, sunshine and some warmer weather, it'll really help a lot of these crops. Oh yeah, it should take off. I mean, uh, get the soybean fields dried out. The, these yellow wet spots in the corn fields, they're done. I don't think we're going to expect a whole lot out of those. They may not die, but I'm not expecting a lot in those areas, uh, especially, you know, up and down the Farm Progress Show Road to the north here, a lot of wet spots, which there traditionally is there. We'll be talking more about that with uh, host farmer David Bricks in just a little bit. Bob, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Bob Lawless and Jenna, Agronomic Service Representative. Well, the race is on with crops uh, here in this area to be ready for the Farm Progress Show. We'll be talking more about that. Stay with us. It's halftime on Agriculture.